Hello, what's going on? Hey, Twitter. No, <laughs> I shouldn't have did that. That was terrible. I'm glad I caught myself. You know what I mean? I could have got canceled on something I put out. So my name is Courtney Shane Williams. I'm a stand-up comic. And uh, if you guys don't know, I just had an album come out with 800 Pound Gorilla Records about a few weeks ago um, called Elevator Style. Please check out the album. It's everywhere. Spotify, Pandora, it's, it's XM Radio. It's everywhere. So check out the album. If you don't know, go to my Instagram, Twitter, at Courtney Shane. That's at K-R-R-T-N-E-Y. Shane, I almost misspelled my name. And uh, you can check it out there. Go to my website, whatever. So I had this idea, like, what can I do to, like, promote the album? And uh, I was on an airplane. I'm doing a gig. And um, I'm sitting there, and I'm thinking, what can I do? And I was like, well, what if I did, like, a director's cut? Like a behind the scenes, you know what I mean? Like, like what's that called when when people not driven? What's the other one called when when the artist goes off the rails? You know, you figure the untold stories. You know what I mean? When you figure out TLC sounded terrible, terrible contract. So I was like, what if I could do something like that, or or like a director's cut? You know what I mean? For an album, it's like no one's thought of this. So it's like great. So uh, I sat down, I jotted out some notes about the album. And so here's my attempt at a director's cut. This is for Elevator Style, my latest album. If you haven't already, go check it out. I think some of the stuff is pretty interesting. You know, behind the scenes stuff, some of the things that I was thinking when I put it together and uh, things of that nature. So I hope you enjoy it. All right, let's get right up into the album. So I'm going to play the album. And while I play the album, I'll talk Courtney over the Shane album Williams. at the same time. So hopefully that's not uh, as annoying. I hope I can stay on top of it. So this right here is an uh, intro. Back it down a little bit. Relax, relax. Everybody. Intro of the album 2020 Roller Coaster. So the funny thing about this is that I actually started writing this album in uh, in 2017, oddly enough. So when I first started working on this album, oddly enough, back that down a little bit more. That's that is distracting. I first started working on this album um, like 2016. Uh, or no, 2017. So I recorded my last album, To Whom It Doesn't Concern, also streaming everywhere, in 2017. However, originally I was going to record it in 2016, and something happened. So for the next year, I was coming up with more material, so it ended up being some of the stuff on this album. The funny part about it is I learned some things. Number one, never work for a year on an album. Terrible idea. Terrible idea. Um, and number two, uh, when you have like the material that you want, just kind of stick with it and don't beat it into the ground. Okay. So it's like, that's the problem with like a year. So like I still had it and it was like, great. So you go out and you perform it. And next thing you know, I'm performing something for a year. So by the time I get to the show, it's basically me going through the, it's a, it's a recital. It's no longer a show. It's no longer organic. It's a recital. I know when the audience was going to laugh. I knew that when they were going to clap. I, I knew when they were going to smile. I knew when they were going to grow. I knew everything the audience was going to do in, on my album in 2017 because I had done it so many times in so many different venues. So on this album, I took like the complete opposite approach. Intro to 2020, this track right here. Uh, the first time I did this track uh, was in Oklahoma City. Uh, during the pandemic, I just started writing. First time I did this track was in Oklahoma City. I recorded this comedy album a month later. The first time I actually actually did this show, the full album, the first time I did this show on stage was the night I recorded. I probably, I worked on material for a while, bits and chunks and pieces in here and there. But the first time I actually put it together and did it on stage was the first time was that night. So all in all, I never got sick of the material. I still do the material now, and it's even stronger than it was when I recorded the album, which is probably not something people want to hear, but that's what it is. So I came up with this during the pandemic. I started writing, jotting some thoughts. Originally, this wasn't actually going to be on the album because I didn't know there was going to be a pandemic. You know, little did I know Bill Gates, you know what I mean? He was holding the puppet strings. So... You'll come up later in the album, what I was going to intro the album with ended up becoming at the back of the album. It, it just weird flipped the order. But because I had this, the only way to get this on the album was to intro with this album. So that's how uh, intro to 2020 became the intro.
I'm going to. That's what I'm going to do. This bit right here. That's what I'm going to do. Crossfit gluten. All this joint. This is one of those that like almost didn't make it. This was one of the tracks that I actually wrote in 2017. Maybe 2016 I was playing with it. 2017 I wrote it and it was done. It was done. Um, but I knew if I didn't record it and get it on the album, it was never going to get on the album. That was it. So this actually got on the album just because I wanted it recorded on the album. You know what I mean? I wanted somebody to be able to search this track and go, rather than it just be something that uh, that was there. Uh, same thing, oddly enough. Am I speeding through too fast? So I'm trying to get to the parts I like. That's the weird thing about doing a project, you know? <laughs> it's like, hey, man, this is about me. You know, so... Um, Quit, this Morgan Freeman track, I'm gonna let it play fair. through a little bit. It. It's hard this to talk and let it play at the same time. Like so, um, this track, uh, is about here. Morgan Freeman, me being a conspiracy theorist, like and I've Morgan Freeman been. being an old man in his entire life. I, really uh, leave, I wrote dude. this I'm in about 2015 ish, and it had like one line. I had the Morgan Freeman line, and I had, um, I had the Morgan Freeman line uh, being an old man in his entire life, and uh, that was basically it. It's all I had. Had nothing else. And then as I started doing more shows, I just started putting other stuff into this track that actually had nothing to do with this track. I just needed more heft. And as I started putting more stuff into it, the meat of the track just got better. And, and this is another one that... Uh, was something that it's I wanted like to I'm get suspicious, on. But I have no this is, uh, and you know the funny thing in this track, I actually had a Terry Perry line that I uh, that I took out of it. Uh, there was actually there's another line. There's a bunch of little lines in this in this Everybody album that uh, uh, I ended up taking out for you know for for a lot of different reasons. One of the reasons, though, however, is that uh, especially the first half of this album, you'll notice when you listen, the first half of this album has more of a family vibe than the second half of the album. Because I wanted the album, especially the first half, to be able to be played on, you know, uh, all ages radio stations on XM. I wanted it to be played, you know, whatever YouTube, whatever, whatever. There's no cursing on the album, but there's definitely more adult material in the second half. So this is one of those things that I'm like, if I take out a couple of these lines, I can put it in the first half of the album. And it's somewhere in the album where it'll get to more venues rather than having it in the second half. Because, you know, I mean, I want to take a jab at Tyler Perry. Not because I know Tyler Perry, but because it's funny. So I took out one of those lines. And then there's a, uh, oh, there's another line in this track. I think I say um, uh, something about old people. Oh, yeah, yeah. I say this line about old people. I said, uh, you know, anybody owns a flip phone basically is a criminal. Anybody with a burner. I was like, you know, and then people will say, well, we bought my uh, grandmother a jitterbug. And I just said, hey, well, congratulations. She's taking Snapchat pictures of her crotch. You can't say that on all ages. So I just took out that Snapchat joke. Ended up doing the Morgan Freeman joke, man. So this is, uh, this is kind of how I went, man. Morgan, I got a question for you. Where do you get the cream for your face, man? You have the smoothest old black man skin I've ever seen in my life, dog. The freckles kind of throw me off. I don't know why they put those on the costumes. This <laughs> nigga move. And then he's going to do it. Morgan Freeman's going to do it. He's going to pull me to the back. He's like, hey, Courtney, watch this. He's going to unzip his face to reveal Benjamin Button. I'm going to catch him. <laughs> Brad Pitt is behind that mask, dude. I'm convinced. So, um... I that's that track. A, a father, now, uh, this the is pandemic, the turning point part weird. of the album it's for, me. A father, uh, uh, for me. During the pandemic, my daughter this is, is when four. I start talking yeah. about So, like, this part of the album, once, I think this is track, what, of, like, four, I something like that? Yeah, track father, four. So, track four through comedy. basically so just took seven you know I mean? kind of was one I big oh, joke, I but I had to daughter. break oh, it up. So, you'll notice these tracks have much more heft and they're much thicker. So, this Kids Ahead Drive Slow Track is something I thought of a long time ago. And I used to do, once again, bits and pieces. As the pandemic started, I started rolling it in. I started doing these weird uh, uh, web shows, like these Zoom comedy shows. So you needed stuff. So I was like, ah, I got this kids bit. So I would do these kids bits and throw some stuff in there and whatever. 
what happened no, though, oddly enough, is like this chunk like kind of started know, growing. And really? once I kind of started performing, because right I live in Florida, so it never shut yeah, down. You know, what I, mean? right there, <laughs> I used to perform in a hazmat suit. Up, so once oh, I started performing, so like it had more heft, and next thing you know, this kid chunk became tremendously long, twenty minutes. So, man, I'm sweating. This you was uh, that, the backbone uh, of uh, of my show. Was this walk? bit right here? What? Uh, the whole we, kids we, chunk we, we, became we, we, the backbone we, of like the show. I so I'm like, I got walk. this. I mean, so I, when I, I decided to break it up into the first half, second half of the album, I knew I wanted all the kids stuff to be up in the first half of the album. So this was probably the edgiest track I had. So you I actually took stuff out of this track and uh, made Understand it to where it could be played on all stations. Man. But this is still like one of my favorite bits no on the album. This the bit he is done. probably gets one of the biggest pops. The only black dude wearing pops sketches is Danny could, Glover. I'm convinced. It's the only one. Uh, but this is a weird so night. I'm power walking with my family. We're bonding, social distancing on our power walk. Now, I, uh, I live in a mixed income neighborhood in, in Florida. So, you know, the one reason I like living in a mixed income neighborhood, a couple reasons. Number one, I like living around an element of danger. You know what I mean? <laughs> Something that makes your hair stand up and lets you know you're alive, you know? You hear a sound, oh, is that fireworks or gunshots? Ah, you know, let's check the mail. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's the space I live in. Another reason. I like living in a mixed income so neighborhood. Uh, very so, another thing I noticed, you, if you have children, I had this. three is that's a good this number of like kids. This is like when I start have. talking yeah, about like my daughter, my family, but I really ice. linked it in together. More than three kids, this bit sudden, is actually kind of coupled with up. the next that, bit. That, that's a sad skip right day in everybody's life. I remember when my wife got pregnant. That was the craziest thing. This is probably the first part of the album when we get into like what I think is like. But then my it's time to have a baby, and I was like, oh, talent, whoa, whoa, whoa. my artistry, gonna have the baby. whatever you want to call it. Well, I mean, yeah, I want to call it stank. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is when I start putting some stank on it right here. <laughs> Back up, here come the ego. Uh, this is when we get into the album. Like, this is this track about my wife having a baby, which is 100 percent true, was was written right there. I would say I this is probably the point in my career when I wrote this. To, get, uh, all it, when I started writing like this is when my daughter was something. born. So we're talking about hey, four Ms. years Williams, ago. Uh, I had a concept oh. of this. And uh, immediately it came works. out great. Uh, First time, great. Know, um, but you, uh, the bit was a really, really, really slow burn. It was super Phoenix, slow. Like the birthing process, oddly enough. So I'm as there. I did it and as I started working, no, and one thing that's going to gonna become the backbone of a lot of, did you hear of me going oh, through this album oh, is going to be me hours. just basically right performing and working the bit. Like when, when I have a joke or a bit, it doesn't come out usually as finished. I kind of start from a concept. And once I get the concept, then I start weaving around the concept. But the concept is still the most important thing. So that's it. I mean, I do some observational stuff, um, but the concept is it. This was the first time I went into actually creating something that was a story. This was the first bit I wrote that was a story from the very beginning. There was no concept. It was this thing happened. Let me explain this thing. And this chunk is probably when I first, it's probably like seven, eight minutes when I first wrote it. It ended up being 20 minutes. I cut it down for this album because as you do it, it gets longer, drawn out, whatnot. So I cut it down. Plus, once again, I wanted it to be heard on all these stations. It, it, it's weird to like compromise because I wanted it to be on these all ages station, all ages stations or be played in all these venues when I know it's much funnier when I put all this other stuff in. So there is a compromise there. But guess what? It doesn't bother me. It is what it is. I got no problem with, you know, business. Plus, I also think it's cool. Like, I would have comedians, artists, uh, musicians, whoever you would go to the show, and it would sound different from the album. I always thought that was so cool. Even, like, one that comes to mind is um, Wanted Richard Pryor, like, live. It, it doesn't sound like, you know, the special. You hear stuff on there, it's like, whoa, that's not on there. I always thought that was cool. So, you know, at one point in time, that might have affected me. Like, ah, I need to do it the way it's supposed to be done. Now I don't really care. You know what I mean? I'm here for the money. Let's be honest, man. 
Once, hey, shout out to 800 Pound Gorilla. And when we had a conversation, they're like, yo, dude, as much stuff as you can get on all ages, man, the better for you. It's like, hey, no problem. Back up and watch me work. So this, uh, this is the one. You gotta have a, a wristband. If you wanna have a baby, just FYI. You gotta, the wristband is what identifies you to the baby. Okay? If you don't have a wristband, you don't get to take the baby home. Which is convenient <laughs> if you don't want the baby. But, I'd work for nine months. I wasn't about to walk away from this baby, right? Let me get two wristbands, boss. A good wristband. Wife came in, I snapped her up. I'm snapped, it's time to go. They put her in the bed. They, they hook the, 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 put all these monitors on her stomach. They hook her to a machine. This is a pain machine. This machine lets me know how much pain she's in. It's, the machine is so good, I know when pain's coming before she knows pain's coming. That's how great the machine is. I'm looking, oh my, oh, whoa, there's a lot of pain coming. What, huh? Ah, that's right, stay woke. I'm running this pain machine. Locked in. The pain got so intense, at one point she got out of the bed and started walking around the room and I probably pain. let this track play through longer point, than any of the uh, other tracks. I got in the bed. <laughs> you know what I mean? Somebody should be comfortable, you know? It's a $5,000 bed, you know what I mean? I'm paying for this bed. I knew what to do, I've been to all the classes. I was like, hey, relax, I know what to do. I was chanting out commands. Hey, baby, you're strong. Yeah, 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 you're, you're the strongest, you're, you're the strongest woman. That's, you are the Black Panther. That's right, you can do it. I yelled that in the hospital room, which is awkward because she's white. But <laughs> every time. A script is a script. So funny enough, I'm gonna back this down a little bit while I play. So um all that all that happened. Not exactly like that, but all that happened. It was a, it was a crazy experience, you know, watching my uh, my wife had a have a child. And as I did, the, 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 there's so many little, I just know when the audience is gonna laugh. So like when I do that line about the Black Panther, I just uh, threw it out there one time. You know what I mean? And it was, it was fantastic and then it, it worked. So like, as I do this joke, this one especially, and I noticed this as, as I started writing, cause there's another bit coming up that's like my strongest, one of my strongest stories. As I start writing these stories bits, it's like I know where it's going and they kind of have no clue. So watching them react like gives me a laugh at the way they're reacting when I know it's coming. You know what I mean? It's just, it's different. It's so much different than doing like observational material because when you do observational material, it's just bang, 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 bang. Even if you do like a, what's the deal? What the, you're kind of doing it together. You know what I mean? When you're doing a story, it's kind of like back up and just believe what I'm doing. You know, I think about so, like like somebody like Cosby, or I think about like like Eddie Murphy Delirious when he's doing the Goonie Goo Goo. He knows where that's going as he's doing it. And if you rewatch Delirious, don't not not when you're done listening to me. If you rewatch Delirious, when he starts that bit, they're not laughing as hard as they are by the end of the bit. But by the end of a story bit, the audience now trusts you. And if you're really good, the audience is invested in the characters. And if you're really, really good, they believe everything you say about the characters is true. So I want to apologize to my wife and my daughter. So I kissed the baby. And then I wipe my mouth immediately. <laughs> I don't know where this baby's been. She had juice on her elbow. I was like, who has wet elbows, son? Your elbows should be dry at all times. Let me just be honest with you. I never trusted her from that day. I was like, yo, her elbows are wet, man. So we're sitting there, been with my wife for a long right. time. Skip been through that, man. Going, full bit on the- uh, close to 10 years. Yeah, full thing, you know check out. So it's getting close. Uh, just relax. This is, this starts the second half relax, of the album. Relax, everyone. This is the line of demarcation. It's for a weird all thing you now because people will call okay? me and they'll be like, "Hey, so, Courtney, you're married. This wow. dating you've been married a long time. Yeah, man, it's chunk. Just great. About how do you do seventy percent of it is true. Yeah, you know how to do it. Thirty percent is Divorce not is true. It's a huge exaggeration. <laughs> That's and a lot of the things out, I saw in this bit, you know, you have and the reason I'm giving like such a disclaimer is because the the amount of people. <clears throat> that apparently think oh, yeah, what you see on out. stage is true is 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 uh, <laughs> is mind blowing. I mean, come on, 
You think I would talk about you know, my personal life with you? I just met you. You're a stranger with a mask on. I'm creeped out. That's what the whole thing is about. So, um, it's about coexisting, originally, I had this idea of like, uh, okay? you know, this Don't dating idea. And originally, the people. dating Everybody chunk was, oh, what if my wife asked me to go out on a date? That, that was the first asked. thing. Because some people like, oh, you got to keep dating when you're married. So I had this idea of like going out on a date. That's how do you date somebody you live with? So it started there. Then I had this idea of like love not being that big of a deal. This is just an evolution of like what I thought about yeah. a relationship because you know you Had read books or you you hear yeah. something I mean, and you, you realize did. like yeah, if you're married like if, if love is all that matters, then a lot of people wouldn't be divorced, right? So I'm like, you can't be love. It got to be something else. So I had this idea of like, you know, coexisting. So then dating, coexisting. And then my wife is a snitch. That part is true. <laughs> that is the 70%. Okay. So then I had this dating, coexisting, and, and, and snitching. So love is just a thing that helps you not kill them in their sleep. That's what love is. This, uh, I'm going to let it You got to coexist. It's, it's about building up enough assets with another person to the point that you can't leave. That's the secret of the game. That's the secret. Everybody in here has thought about killing their spouse. That's how you know the relationship is working, all right? You see him sleeping at night, oh, I would choke him with that pillowcase if I could. I need somebody to pay half this rent, though, huh? You live to see another day. Well, it works. So it's funny, like when you do these things and you say choking somebody with a pillowcase, like this is not something that's ever gone through my mind. You start with something small and it expands to something else. So I've never thought about killing my spouse. That's what I'm saying. All you people <laughs> that are concerned about my personal life, like I'm good. I'm good. It's a joke, okay? Um, so as we get towards the end of this bit, uh, you'll see the next, uh, the next, you know it leads into the next chunk. Actually, was wrong with let's just skip through. Skip through the next chunk. This is probably, I have flaws too. Uh, in my flaws. point, in my in my opinion, my wife knows that. She's figured it the out. star of uh, the star of the album. Uh, I feel like this is the best track on the album. This is a baby track, but I feel like pound for pound, this is like the best thing on the album. There was two backbones of this album. My wife having a baby was a big backbone. And this one, dating, coexisting, wife being a snitch, leading into my worst night ever. This story is 100% true. 100% true. Like, I added details, and that's it. And guess what? There are more details. Like, there is stuff on the cutting room floor. This could have been a Tarantino movie. I could have chopped it up back to front. I could have did a lot of crazy stuff, but I told it as it happened. Uh, I don't even know if the person would want to be identified with what what happened. <clears throat> but uh, let me let me play this through just to get a backbone of what we're talking about. I get back. It's the worst night of my life. I was hanging out after a comedy show, and uh, I did some uh, I did some edibles with this dude at the show. What am I doing doing edibles, son? The dude was like, "Hey, man, you know." The way he introduced it is what got me, because he was like, hey, man, you want to have some butter? It's weird. I had never had somebody offer me butter randomly out of a dish they pulled out of their back pocket. This is a weird thing. Hey, you want some butter? I was like, really? Why is it black? What the hell did you make the butter with? Relax, Courtney. Let's have a little butter. And then he pulled out some King's Hawaiian rolls, you know what I mean? And I just wanted the bread, honestly. Let me be real. I can eat King's Hawaiian roll with no butter, you know what I mean? I can eat dry like a duck, you know what I mean? I can just throw it back with no butter. This happened. I don't want to offend him. Say, hey, sure, I'll have some of that butter. So I pulled out the King's Hawaiian, and I, I, I dapped up the butter, you know what I mean? He's eating weed, you know what I mean? Like, like, I'm, like I'm a drug mule. I just fucking dap it up. I throw the butter that. It's great. Then he came back and said, hey, Courtney, we got a little more butter if you want some more butter. I was like, man, it's been like two hours? Man, that butter ain't nothing, man. Bring on more of that butter. <laughs> that's when things went wrong. I, didn't, I had never done edibles before. I didn't know that's, you know. When you do edibles, I didn't know you do one edible and you got to wait for that to kick in for the rest of your life. You know what I mean? <laughs> 
You don't double dip until the first one gets a chance to do what it wants to do. If it gets a second one, it finds out you're cheating on the first one. Oh, really? Oh, watch what the hell I do to you. The room is shaking. Parable. Five minutes later, the room started shaking back to front. I'd never shaken back to front. So, man. I'm uh, shaking the room so like, all this happens, right? Hey, so man, this night, the room still right doing now. edibles, so guy pulls out going on, man? bread, oh, man. and uh, this hey, probably hey, happened man. for we, like we, we, we do right now. an hour and a half later. I didn't feel anything. Then, then I, I like went back for a second one, and then like thirty minutes later, I knew something was happening. Like thirty, the spirits had got me. The spirits had got me. Shout out to Chappelle. Uh, and I was like, yo, I got to get out of here. So as we go through this bit, like, I'm trying to like get home, basically. He was like, relax. I was like, hey, Corey, I, I, I need to get home. We got to get home now. It's like, oh, what? Look, look, call me an Uber. I, I need to leave. I, I got to call the police, man. I, I need to get home immediately. I took a 45 minute Uber ride. True story. Three blocks from my house. It's how high it was. I was so high, I thought the driver was following me home. This is how high was. So I remember, uh, so I, so I ended up leaving this comedy club. You know what I mean? And uh, like, hey, man, I'm, I'm, like, I'm blitzed. Yeah, yeah, but I'm so high, and I'm so I'm out of my mind, right and now, I'm man. so it's really it's paranoid that I think the driver is kidnapping me. And I don't know if he had a clue. I'm sure he had a clue. He had to know. But I was so paranoid that I started calling my wife nonstop because I felt like, it, you know what I mean? Like, you, you ever see like those Lifetime movies? And he went missing and they never heard again. I didn't want that to be me. So I was like, you know what I'll do? If I keep it's calling my wife, I can you document, oh, you know, yeah, basically my life. You know what I mean? Sure. Hey, we're going here. But uh, I, I was... I didn't want her to know that I had done edible, right? Tonight? Because my wife at the time, I think she was about five yeah, or six months pregnant. So this, this is... Uh, you know, and, and, and like, you know what I mean? I'm not supposed pregnancy. to be doing that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? I know I have bad reactions, right? So I don't do any drugs at all. What got into me that night, I don't know. So um, need to ride to the hospital tonight. I'm di I keep calling my wife and I'm telling her, hey, I'm here. Hey, yes, I'm there. Hey, I'm here. Hang up. Five minutes later. Hey, I'm here. Hey, I'm there. Hang up. So in my mind, I'm thinking that the driver is listening to me talking and he knows I'm aware that he's trying to kidnap me. So I want she him to know that, that I know Get you're trying now. to kidnap like, me. Okay, you fine. will not kidnap me tonight because someone know, knows where Wait, I am man, right uh, now. But I'm 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 not so high out. that I said that out loud. I'm saying this inside of my head, okay? So eventually, um, he looked at me. I get home. He's like, oh, no problem. Get out of the car. <laughs> We're parked right now. <laughs> How long have we been in front of my house, man? It's ridiculous. Who left the Christmas lights up? <laughs> Savages live here. It's the worst. I got out of the Uber. You ever have somebody waiting for you to get home, by the way? That is the worst feeling on earth. You, 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 you walk up to the door when they're waiting on you. you. You go to put the key in the door. You ever had this happen? You put the key and somebody's waiting for you on the other side. You don't even get a chance to turn. Again. They just pull the door open from the other side, pissed off, ready to choke the life out of you. You know what I'm saying? I went, I went to put my key in and she pulled the door open. I was so high, I thought I'd do it. did a magic trick. I was like, ah, ta da! Oh, it's you! 100% <laughs> Yes, it's me. It's like, oh man, I thought I'd never see you again, man. It's, we just talked on the phone. You, you, you never know, man. It's, it's good to see you. Oh. This is awkward. I can't believe you. I can't believe this either. You know what I mean? We gotta figure this out, though. You know, something, something's happening right now. All right. Disgusting. One thing that's happening through to the next track. To visit so this basically visit starts the conclusion of the album. Crazy. You know what I mean? This you know? this track uh, was actually two so, different tracks. I think uh, I this is actually a story go. about the first time Tulsa, I went to Oklahoma. Little Rock, Arkansas. That off the list. And then I had this story about wow. the first time going to what Tulsa. So originally, this was the intro of the album. Before the pandemic, I was going to start the album with this. It's like a, hey, you know, I perform here, there, wherever. Before there was a pandemic, I was going to do that and then go into the rest of the show. Then I had the pandemic. 
then I started thinking Straight about structure. But I wanted to get this thing in too. Porno? So Why then it so flipped. Paranoid? I was like, you know, if style? I close with it, I can do, Tulsa. hey, this Matt. is the story. Easy to do and I've performed here, here, way. and here. And then get to the, the know, outro, the which you know, you you'll see in a like minute. So um, this is a story about hey, Tulsa, things like that, going there. You know what I mean? It's not nothing too detailed. It is what it is. Um Actually, funny enough, this is uh, going to Tulsa was wild. There's just some wild stuff that happened there. Not my stilo, you know what I mean? Love the people, love to come back. I just can't stay, you know what I mean? I love you guys. I just, I just can't stay. Okay, I'll be back. I'll perform, but it, it'll be a one nighter. I mean, it'll be, a, it'll be a one nighter. You'll have to find me in Lincoln. You know what I mean? Next night. They hit all the hot spots, you know what I mean? So Little Rock, there, Tulsa, Lincoln. Uh, they, 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 uh, <clears throat> this is the outro. This is the end. The uh, I recorded this album in Seattle, Washington. I started my comedy Seattle, career in 2004. It's the first time I went to Seattle, Seattle, Seattle was I, probably I the, 2006 the, the or 7. And I remember... Uh, and it was great from the first time first thing that me off I landed. Was a different place. And the place that I wanted so, to uh, is, uh, is the I went to Seattle in 07. <clears> I, I ended up moving there square. And, and how about 09. Like, hey, I think I'm lost. 08. The, the lady just uh, came up. To, then I came she, back she I was lost. to Florida. Like, hey, then I sir, went back. Are you lost? And I ended so, yeah, up getting like a permanent residence. She's like, okay. And late in 2009. And uh, so I, I jump on this old woman. It was great. Back, like, the performing was great. The comedy was fantastic. The life is rough. The lifestyle was rough. But everything else was great. It, it's one of those things. Like when I went to Seattle, it was the first like comedy city I'd ever lived in. I started in Florida. Florida's not a comedy city. It's not a comedy hub. So like I remember going to Seattle. That was the first time. Um, I'm not gonna say his name, you know. But this comedian I was working with, I was a feature. At, and uh, it was the headliner. And the show was in Bellingham. Like and uh, I'm like, sure, man, I'm, he was like, hey, you know, we got a show tomorrow. I'm like, yeah, man, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to get there. You know, I'm trying to, what's the bus? I'm not scared of catching a bus. Yeah, I'm taking a bus from D.C. to Chicago. You know, I'm not scared of a bus, okay? And he goes, oh, I'll give you a ride. Like, what? You'll give me a ride? That's what I figured out. The big thing in Seattle is talent. If you have talent, people will work with you. People want to be around talented people. Like that is, 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 is not the commerce, but that's the exchange. Talent, you know what I mean, for gigs. Tampa's not really like that. Florida's not really like that, right? This talent has and, uh, almost was, uh, nothing to do with it, right? For little You're just getting and up, and once you get up, it's like, yo, I'm good. And, uh, There's no comedy so city. So Seattle was, as a performer, Seattle was fantastic for me, man. I ended up living there for 10 years. Hey, thanks for doing the show. So I do this gig with the great Chris. Now, he would love that, because this dude, he loves some promotion. You know what I mean? So I do this gig, and they have these gigs in Bremerton, Washington. Get in trouble. On the other side. Of, of the bridge. The time I mean, it's like, like eight miles. It was on the other side. So, yeah, in, in Kitsap County, they have these gigs. Season, so and so, know, so this night, this great they're all private shows. The so, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to completely talk over this whole bit. So, this <laughs> night, uh, I do this private <laughs> show, private gig. It's for, and it's always a fundraiser. Not only is it private, it's a fundraiser. So, it's not like a, uh, it's like, it's not like a business. No, no, no. This is just like families. Like, hey, how can we generate money for like the softball team? Or we'll have a, a, a banquet. I did something for like fallen police officers. You know what I mean? I did something for firefighters. I did something for, uh, oh, beauty pageants. There, there was this girl, like an, um, like the horse riding pageants. I did some person who was on American Idol and they needed money to get to New York. You know what I mean? I mean, that probably didn't succeed because I don't watch American Idol, but Kitsap County has never came across the bottom line. So I'm sorry about that. But we did all these gigs. So there's one night I go into it and I've probably been doing them for about three, four months. I'm, I'm not that familiar with Seattle. So, but I had this bit about um, the 12th man. And uh, I didn't know who the 12th man was. I had no clue what 12th man is. I didn't know any of that, you know? So when I got, they were like, oh, the 12th man. And people would talk about it so much in Seattle, and it would annoy me because it was like, yo, you don't play for the team, okay? <laughs> this is a weird in indignance that I had. But then it just, you know, you just kind of accept it. It's like, all right, cool. Because Seattle was no good when I first went there. Then they got good. Then it became annoying. Because the only thing annoying us about fans is fans that have a good team. 
when your fans have a bad, unless you're like the Jets, you know, if you if you're in like New York, and you're just annoying all the time. But the annoying fan bases are fan bases that have good teams. So they got good. And I remember like walking around Seattle and I would see jerseys with the number 12 on it. And I was like, who is, who is fan? Who the hell is fan? Who is this dude? I looked in the ring of honor. There's no fan up there. So this, this Asian dude is a baller. This guy right here is the key to the whole team. He's selling jerseys like, who the hell is fan? So I was walking past a sporting goods store and it hit me. This happened. You people made a jersey for yourself. What the hell? Who does it? You know what kind of ego you have to have to say, hey, move over Russell Wilson. I'm playing quarterback today. You understand? I am the fan. You guys are great. Thank you guys for coming out. So that concludes the album. So that's exactly what happened, man. I was, it was a Dick Sporting Goods, and, and one day it just clicked. I'd probably been living in Seattle like over a year by that point, and it clicked. I'm like, oh, 12 is the 12th man. Oh, fan, you are a fan. Einhorn is Finkel. Finkel is like, Einhorn's a man. Like, then it's just clicked. So I had this bit where I'm like, oh, man, who's fan? And that's how I would like close these benefit shows. It was nice, these people. You know what I mean? They're not really interested in your art. They just want to do things. So I'm like, oh, Seattle, that connects. So I did this. So there's one night, you know, they serve drinks at these benefit shows. You know what I mean? You would think the T-ball team, they wouldn't be going to get drunk around their parents. But they don't care. These kids are drinking. So um, I do this show and I start this bit. And I'm like, oh, you know, Seahawks, whatever. I'm just getting to what I want to get to. So at one point I said, uh, some, some, something, Russell Wilson. And this guy stands up in the audience. And he starts walking. He said, it's something like, watch your mouth or something, something like, I'm like, oh, man, whatever, dude. I'm like, this dude's like, and I just said something like, oh, this dude, you know, whatever. You know what I mean? But not like, you know, it's a benefit show. Like, all these people know each other. You know what I mean? <laughs> this is a hundred on one. This is not going to end well. And then all of a sudden, he starts, like, charging the stage. And I'm like, yo, my man. So he ends up getting drug out of this place. And uh, I had to keep doing material. It was really awkward, man, because at that venue, after the show, they would feed you. So I was like, hey, man, I'm, I'm going to get my food to go. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Bosworth is out in the alley waiting on me, right? So we do this whole show. This guy charges the stage. So it ended up becoming the conclusion of this bit. Uh, uh, and uh, it wasn't the first time in Seattle, but it was definitely within my first year. And I recorded this album in Seattle. So I thought it was appropriate to do a track that has Seattle in the track, especially because Seattle was such a fundamental part of my career as a comedian. It's, uh, though, it's the backbone. Seattle is the greatest comedy city in America. I say it all the time. It truly is. It's the first place I was able to go and create. I mean, the first time, from the first time I was there, first time doing guest spots, I remember in Seattle. Um, I remember being like, whoa, I can be creative on stage. I can be creative in the moment. Like I can, I can not do great and they'll stay with me and I can explore and they'll stay with me. You know, come in the background of Florida, like it got to be popping. Like they'll stay with you for about 10 to 15 seconds of it kind of not working and then they're out. But in Seattle, they would stay with you and let you get to a point and it was so much easier for my material to create and develop material. So it's a very instrumental time during my career ended up moving to seattle so this is about oh nine it's five years into my career and for the next 10 or so years that's where i was and that's where uh this album was created so i thought it was appropriate to end this track with seattle dude so uh that's the album that is what it is elevator style for you guys to stay for the whole sesh as the kid would say kids would say uh thank you uh, check out the album, please do. It's everywhere. It's on Spotify, Apple Music, you know, uh, wherever. I think iHeartRadio, Pandora. Check it out. Share it. Um, like it. Instagram, Twitter. I don't know when I'm going to post this, but when I do post this, you know, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube or, or give it a like on YouTube. Share it out. If you think it's interesting, you know, let me know. Leave a comment. I don't take it personal. You know, the funny thing is I start liking comments when people talk negative about me. I remember this, this is guy on Facebook. Some people on Facebook was like, oh, this guy's not funny. 
and I just comment, hey, thanks for listening. Appreciate it. <laughs> and I only comment to people that leave terrible comments, man. It's one of those things, man. So uh, that's it. That's the conclusion of Elevator Style. That's the director's cut. Take it easy. Peace. It'd be so funny if I didn't record any of that.